Good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Folare. It's, it's, it's getting a bit disheartening and um, it's almost as, as if um, one could get a, a terrorist fatigue, but one mustn't allow oneself to, um, no matter how dastardly you know, happening, uh, the happenings are that occur. Uh, I'm speaking, of course, you know, from the point of most Nigerian parents uh, with the Greenfields University uh, situation where 20 students were abducted uh, over a week ago and then we were shocked midweek and when we were told that um, three of them had actually been killed and been deposited you know where people could see them now the latest is that two more of those students uh, have been killed um, that's in Kaduna Greenfield University and as is well known, the governor there is um, uncompromising. Um, evil tri triumph over good, and um, the, they will not win. This, if this is a struggle, then it's the, the Kaduna state government is not going to back down. And Kaduna state government's position has been that we will not negotiate with bandits. We will not pay a ransom. Okay, um, uh, let's, of course, you can understand it emotionally. The point of view of the guardians and parents of the abducted kids are getting more and more frustrated. Um, yet, let's talk about it. And my guest this morning is Mr. Jide Ologun. Uh, Jide is a lawyer and public affairs analyst. Uh, thanks for coming along uh, again today. You're welcome. We well, appreciate Lord. your coming. And um, we shall be joined, um, if not immediately, uh, we, uh, we plan to be joined and we shall be joined by Hassan Abdul Aziz Sani. Mr. Sani is a communications expert and opinion molder. He'll be joining us by you know, one of the services, uh, one of those, um, you know what I'm talking about. So. Um, this is gone beyond worrying. It's like we have to do all that we can to ensure that we don't sort of go into a sort of a, a depression uh, with what is going on. So many fronts, if it's not a military person being killed, it'll be a police officer, and now people that are not even ordinarily in the line of fire we're talking about children well students we're talking about soft those kind of soft targets uh, for ransom exclusively and expressly for ransom now parents i have seen videos uh, parents of those who have been abducted have been saying that governor el rufai is too harsh um you know we need to understand these things uh, but governor rufai is not backing down Give me your impression, first of all, first of all about the stance, and uh, people would want to link the two. There are those who might want to link the two. But give me your impression on the stance of what the law says, no negotiating with bandits and terrorists. To start with, the Constitution is the grand norm, and Section 14, Subsection 2 of the Nigerian Constitution, 1990, as amended, says that the security and the welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. And the Constitution did not say government should negotiate or not negotiate. It's an assignment. And on being sworn into office, you express your allegiance to upholding the spirit of the Constitution. But here we are now. We are debating whether to negotiate with gunmen or not to negotiate. And they are carrying out well, the their nefarious the, the, activities. The government in Kaduna is not negotiating. That's what I'm saying. Okay. But on the other side of the coin, some are saying, particularly okay. the victims, the parents, exactly. parents that we are parents. even ready to pay. I will um, not even subscribe to, to whether we are negotiating or not. Are we now saying that the apparatus of the government that is expected to prevent crime has collapsed because in the criminal justice value chain there are several segments what the responsibility of the security apparatus to prevent crime when it takes place apprehend prosecute you know what, what you know convict if necessary so that you prevent reoccurrence but right now we appear to be justifying the position of skinner Skinner came up with the, the reinforcement theory in industrial psychology and in communication that the environment you create in motivation will reinforce the activities of those within that environment. And right now, it's like we are reinforcing crime in Nigeria. 
by negotiating. Whether no, not even well, by how, negotiating. How, how, or how, not. how are we reinforcing crime? Uh, this kind of I'm, I'm sure crime. You're referring to this. Permit kind of me to, to migrate <coughs> from this Greenfield University student, sure. and it's so painful. Sure. Look at what happened in Borono State. How the Nigeria Air Force claimed to have mistakenly blown off a military truck conveying soldiers. And reportedly, these gunmen, these terrorists, came invading in MR. Peace, meaning mine resistant uh, personnel carriers, vehicles, sophisticated weapons, and we have a government. And our authentic military are not equipped to tackle. So you, you just wonder, Uncle Yori Folari, I like to move away from the macro environment and come to the micro environment. Imagine that you are in an estate. You have a security outfit to man the gate, you pay them well, you give them all the conveniences, and they come telling you that, sir, we have 90 armed robbers in this estate right now. They have stolen six vehicles, they just drove out. We are negotiating with them whether they should steal a Volvo or steal a Rolls Royce. That is the picture I, I, I am looking at. What is the essence of government? What is the essence of government? We are not even talking about how to prevent uh, the, the, the crime against the state. We are talking about negotiating or non-negotiating. And I will buttress my point by what happened recently. But it's just interesting that in Nigeria, a lot of issues happen and they pile up on each other. Recently, somebody went to these bandits and told us the government know where they are. That they have been pushed into crime because they are marginalized. Took photographs with them, showing us sophisticated weapons. Who is equipping them? Mm. We even had reports pointing to those who are sponsoring them. We divert our attention from it. We are pretending. And right now, sir, in the first half, the, the, the first quarter of year 2020, Ghana attracted the highest foreign direct investments in West Africa. And the report about Nigeria is that the most populous country mm -hmm. in comparison. Mm -hmm. And we are talking about poverty. You, you know, when, when you when, when, when you are enumerating you know, all those um, situations, um, I, I, I sort of it crossed my mind that how much of this can one really put on government? As in this case, we're talking about the Kaduna situation. Um, we often hear about asymmetric warfare. Uh, you, you don't know who you can trust. Uh, you know, they are underground. If you can see them, then you can fight them. But you can't see them until they strike. And um, uh, one doesn't, how, how does one deal with it? We've been told by experts in, in combat, in warfare, uh, that it's, it's, it's an almost impossible task, but that the our military authorities are adapting, as the case may be. Maybe not fast enough, but, you know, it's not as if, um, so it's like, what could we possibly do? And I, I sympathize, I understand, one, the, the, purest, the, the, the purest point about the constitution that you made, there shall be no negotiation with, uh, negotiation with criminals. After even the law recognizes that the, the law will not allow a criminal to profit from, uh, from, his, uh, uh, from his loot unless they don't know it. But in these unusual times, parents in frustration, not knowing what else to do, are saying that, is there any chance that my daughter could be saved? And if officialdom is not going to give me joy, then allow me to go meet them, as it were. Let me go into the unknown to see if I can save my daughter, if I can save my son. Is it? Do, do you understand the human uh, uh, re, re, uh, angle part? I think it's all about mindset. But, well, it's I, mindset, I, I, but I, it's I, also someone's daughter yes, or I someone's son. Now, we are discussing Greenfield case. Well, it has brought up the latest. What about Leah, uh, Leah Sharibo? Yes. What about the Chippewa girls? What about the several abducted Nigerians? So what about them? That had not been reported. Well, if they were, Leah Sharibu, so she she has been reported. It's it, well, it, it, the it, it, it's, it's an open source. Rescue her, rescue it's an her. open. That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm asking my next question. Let's assume that the students kidnapped from Greenfield University were children of senators, 
House of Rest member, Inspector General of Police. I, you know, I, I wish them well. Consular General of Customs of Immigration. We will be talking about negotiating or not no, 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 negotiating. What, you, what do you mean? So did, what did I you mean, mean that, sir? Did, did, you, did you mean by what you just said that if it were some highfalutin political figure that our... Those uh, children uh, will be out in 48 hours. So, and we can go into content so, so, analysis. So, so, you're implying, time to bring so, so, so you're implying that we actually have the wherewithal, uh, official wherewithal, Absolutely. to prevent these tragedies, Absolutely. but that we're not doing it because the, the law seems to be for two different sides of people. That is my suspicion. And it is obvious almost everywhere. Well, you the, find yourself in the traffic, it, there's this particular class of Nigerians who we cause their way through. I know. Irrespective of how difficult. But All one right? doesn't have evidence for some of the things that you said. You know, some of the things that you said, one doesn't have hard sir, evidence. And are, you know better than me. Please, you, sir, know you know better than me. When I make statements here, mm -hmm. you can pick it and go and Google it. On the 17th of January 2017, and it's coded, 17 mm -hmm. ran uh, internally displaced people's camp, was bombarded by the, the, the Air Force, reportedly, mistakenly. I think on the 13th of March, 2021, an Alpha jet is reported missing. We are still debating. Well, you see, and I, I'm beginning to ask myself a question because I would rather be, you know, an agenda setter, a gatekeeper. Now the Chicago jets have not arrived. Air Force is mistakenly bombarding the military according to when the chicano jets arrive who are we going to use the jets to fight i'm shouting to nigerians now whether you are a preacher whether in the national assembly whoever you are opinion leaders traditional rulers rise up to secure nigeria now I hear when you. the chicano jets arrive may we not be shocked to realize that they may end up in wrong hands there was a report of a revered retired a top military officer who said almost 90% of the weapons available to the terrorists were seized from the military. Are you not surprised, sir, well, that I, in my country, the first thing terrorists say, are in, use, using MRP? You know, I don't in any way, shape, or form want to disparage, quote-unquote, research on the Internet. Um, but, but you, you, you know, stuff from there must be taken with caution. Because I've taken you, them with you people, you, you, you people by which I mean lawyers, reality. lawyers will not accept as evidence something I read on the internet, and, and that's, that's why that I said, that's why I said there's a positive. Is now. Till there's now, a positive some have not accepted there's poverty in this land. Till now, some are still telling us Nigeria is more secured now no, in no. 2021 no. than it was in 2015. I mean, recently, some boys were kidnapped. Was in Katsina State. A top government official came out to say they were no more than seven. So later came out to apologize so, to also. It's a matter of mindset and perception. But to what they see is different from what some people see. But Maybe. To, but not to lose the train of our, of our thought. Um, we started off from the unfortunate Greenfield University incident in Kaduna, and uh, I've situated it against the backdrop of the official policy in Kaduna. Um, you know, led by Governor El Rufai, is that there will be no negotiations. Now, um, one understands the, if you want, the correctness of his position uh but i don't know you lo you lawyers have maxims for the fact that the, the fact that the thing is 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 legal doesn't mean that it is right i think i've heard it said whatever whatever concoction of that say a thing might be legal and probably morally dubious uh i don't know if there's also the other way around so we were looking at we, we we're trying to look at that situation one is governor rufai el rufai is it is it wrong to take that tough stance uh, and then two uh, are we, can, can these conceivably be linked, this, this kind of incident that we're bemoaning now, can it be linked to the bandits saying, ah, is that the way it is? Okay, l let's, let's see who will blink first. Uh, I think I quite agree with you. As the governor in Cardinal said, he has the principal responsibility to secure lives and properties. And if he chooses not to negotiate with bandits, fine. In fact, even though that, he, will, be, he that will bring say, a cost. Bandits do not deserve to live. It, 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 yeah, it, that it's, it's not killed. fine actually, but, but I... Aesop, a wise man, said, after much is said and done, mm -hmm. more is said than done. Okay. If you are not negotiating, 
are you preventing them from operating? Okay. That's the big question. It is. And that's, that's a concrete question. A concrete that is result. a concrete question. There has to be a result. If in the scenario I painted the other time, the security agencies in our estate decide that, okay, leave this thing to us. We, we know what to do. And for six months, no car is stolen. There is peace. Then you can go to them. Ah, what did you negotiate or did you not negotiate? I don't, you see, when I go to an eatery to eat, sir, I don't go to the kitchen to be served. I go to the reception or what, where do you call it? And I point, give me fried rice, give me this one. Mm -hmm. What goes on in the kitchen is not my business. Relate that if to the, our conversation. Yeah. Related. We say that security is everybody's business. I quite agree with that. But I went out to vote you into office. And you swore to a constitution to secure me. We call it social contract in law and in political science. So now, after you are in office, you are well secured. You are well paid. You have paraphernalia of office. And you are coming back to me that, hey, I'm supposed to secure you, but I think you have to find a way to secure you know, yourself. I, I, and that is, that, is my, and that is where I have the problem. I hear you. Uh, but That's where I have the problem. Uh, indeed, I, I can understand you. you. See, now, I, I know, but you can correct me if I'm wrong. I, I know that you're not, you're not a politician. You're a lawyer. Uh, that's I'm not an active politician. You're not, not an active politician. Because no. I was going to say that I understand perfectly what you're saying, but it does sound like the kind of thing that the opposition would be saying. You know, it, it, if you look at it, it does sound because, in the face of those things that you are saying, government is saying that they are hardly sleeping, they are walking around the clock, they're doing this, they're doing. In short, they have not been sitting on their hands. I, I appreciate that's the, that. That's I appreciate, the point of I your government. That, but I think I can engage that also. Okay. Now we are here running helter skelter, expressing our frustration at not being able to combat uh, bandits and gunmen. Mm -hmm. But is it the same in the UAE? We are here talking about not being able to resolve crises with doctors and things like that. But my president went to the UK for medical checkup. If the doctors there were on strike, if the scenario in the UK is like what we have in Nigeria, what would have happened? Yeah, but so that's, you see, but, but that's I, a different I, I, conversation. I don't, it's sir, not. It's not. It's that's a, a matter of governance mindset, sir. United States of America has 50 states and provides 24-7 electricity because the governor's mindset is that electricity is a fundamental human right. So they cannot imagine that you live in a community in the USA and you don't have access to electricity. Forgive but me. is it the same in my country? For, forgive me for Where we so. have the for, largest electricity of saving so. gas in Africa? Forgive me for saying so. I still think that's a different conversation. Why? Very important. Yeah, I'm but, bringing but, it down. But, but if, a different if, conversation. If we value from, human from, beings. From let what me, we're let looking me come at to your here, level. The of value. Very... Uh, please, if you can come down to <laughs> let, my let level. Let me come to. Uh, let, come let down. Now, exactly. Come down to my level. Let me now bring another see, scenario. Seeing it from the point of view of um, uh, the victims. An American was kidnapped. Because sorry, in sir, the neighboring the country, kidnappers sir. don't care what you make of our host, uh, the hostage that they hold. They, in fact, I, I don't know. You can't verify videos that are circulating on the Internet. I was listening to a video by an alleged kidnapper negotiating a ransom. And um, he, he said therein, I'll verify it, you know, an alleged kidnapper, that, um, you know, I don't care. You know, it's up to you. You bring the money. I only have the space for four hostages at one time. And if, I've, if you haven't done so in, in this amount of time, sorry, I'm going to have to kill them. I mean, I, it, 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 that's why I said it's unverified. We don't know what's I, I, going I, I, on. I'll, I'll so come, I'll from the point that. of view of the person that was unfortunately, supposedly, allegedly arguing, see what you can do for me, sir, to the terrorists. You know, I just want sir, my sister back. I, 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 just I just want my brother back. I just spoke about governance mindset. An American was kidnapped in a foreign country, brought to Nigeria. An American. Not a politician, not prominent, not Zubaka. And the American but government. Those are unfair rest, no! They are if unfair you want to develop, sir, you compare yourself with frontliners. Okay. That is the. I, that, I, that is, I, you see. You know. And the American government came to rescue a citizen in Nigeria, breach, breaching diplomatic protocols. So All right. that successfully. Example, that example. That's a brilliant it, example. So you, you are. So if you are, value are, you, are you criticizing the lives us? Of your, are not, you criticizing us for not sir, having I, that I, capability I, 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 yet? We have, we have the capabilities. Uh, uh, we have it. You think? Yes. Okay. 
How did we handle the Python dance in the Southeast? Uncle Yori. How did we handle the Python dance? How? You see, so, and that is what, until we go back to the fundamental crisis we have in this country, which may be regional in a sense, and you've warned me not to go into my content analysis anymore, but I can bring no, up but facts. I mean, you can go in there. <laughs> but I just want us to try and have a, a, a realistic see, when, conversation. When, when we value, bearing in mind that we know there, are, that there that are people all over the country, parents, wards all over the country that are hurting uh, from this situation, and they find themselves caught in between. Let's now position it with a movement that came up. That one is also documented. Boko Haram rose up around 2000, 2002 as running with a vision that is against Western education. Can you say that they have succeeded extensively or that they have failed? I think they have succeeded. How many schools have been shot in the northern part of the country now? They started with an ideology, and that is why some Nigerians are still trying to interpret the statement of my well-respected president when he assumed office in 2015 that Boko Haram has been technically defeated. Okay. And yeah. today we are yeah. talking about Boko Haram hosting their flags in Niger State. I mean, is, is there, sir? Okay. Of sacking let, communities let, in, let, in Borono State. Okay, let me, let me, let, let's hear, and uh, we'll come back to it, of course. Let's hear from um, Alhaji Hassan Abdulaziz Sani, communications expert and opinion uh, molder. Uh, good morning, Alhaji. Good morning, Mr. Yori, and good morning, Nigerians. Thank you very much. Uh, I have Mr. Gide Ologun in studio here, as you might be seeing, um, you know, on television. Now, I don't know if you've been able to listen to all of our conversations since we started, and uh, I'd like to... Take... Uh, okay. I, I was trying to connect, but you, you need to refresh okay. uh, whatever well, was discussed. Well, okay. Uh, the, uh, we're talking security and um, the likelihood that uh, I, I hope we don't get to security fatigue kidnapping fatigue in, in this society. But the main plank that we're looking at, Alaji, is um, the latest two Greenfield University students that you know, were dumped again uh, for us to see. And this is after three, making five out of the 20 that were kidnapped about an hour, about um, you know, something like a week ago. Now, we, we, we place this uh, incident in Kaduna against the hardline stance of the governor there that we will not negotiate with bandits. We will not negotiate with terrorists. We will not pay ransom. We will defeat them. And um, as you know, that's to one side. That's the official policy. And uh, my friend here has been saying that um, that indeed is um, how the Constitution would um, have it. But what, what say you? Because parents are saying that the law is what it is. That is my daughter out there. That is my son out there. I want to do, if government don't, doesn't want to do anything, don't prevent us from trying to safeguard our kids. How say you, sir? Um, Mr. Yori, it seems we as governors, we are playing into the hands of kidnappers. Because the child government, they failed. They are now turning to the parents of the kidnapped students to extort money from them. But the real agenda of the brigands is to take a chunk from state government or even federal government of Nigeria because they are very sure that the state or the federal are the custodians of a huge sum of money. But they fail. But for them not to lose out, they are now playing a card of parents to come in. And the killings you saw or you heard about is a way of whipping the state government into a line to dance to their tune. It's a blackmail in its true color. It's a way of making a state government to pay ransom. And as far as I'm concerned, pay ransom is enriching the armories of the brigands. It will never solve any problem. 
Let me take you down memory lane. Immediately, the incident of Kaduna happened. The, the commissioner and special advisor in charge of security to Kaduna State Government, Arwan, and uh, some military officers were at the scene. And what Mr. Arwan said, he said, those that agree to pay ransom, what happened to them? He was referring to the governor of the first state. The governor of the first state has been playing the card of this amnesty and what have you. Amnesty, soft landing for the bandits. And despite doing that, they still went on and killed many people just of recent, more than 30 people at his home. So, what are we talking about? So you, 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 you feel that you, you feel that the Kaduna State Government is is justified in its hardline stance. Let me tell you what Kaduna State Government is doing is the right thing to do. You don't abuse terror. You treat terror with terror. When you give them money, you empower them to kidnap more. Only God knows how many people they will kidnap. You know, Alaji, I, I, I think you're right. Um, there, there will be no end to it once you give in to blackmail. Uh, it's an almost universal concept. Uh, is why some people call the bluff of blackmailers, even when it is at a deep cost in, uh, in our personal and social lives. They come out with whatever it is they, uh, the, um, the other people sought to black them, blackmail them with and um, call the bluff. So, but in a different sort of setup here, this is what um, is going on in Kaduna. There, however, will be consequences of such a hard line um, which the authorities in Kaduna are not uh, unaware of. Uh, now, for, for the rest of us, for everybody else, including even the citizens of Kaduna, it's like, from what you're saying, people on, who are unfortunate to be in that situation, if it's going to fall under the ages of the Kaduna state government, you've just got to strengthen your heart, so to speak, to know that Unless the kidnappers see light and, you know, release those that have been abducted, the government is not going to give in. And the scary proposition we're hearing now, that I have uh, the kidnappers supposedly saying that we have room only for so many, uh, blah, 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 what is the word now, hostages, and we need to refresh. So we're going to kill them if you don't come across. This is scary. Um, it's scary to some extent, we say, you see, we are having uh, a kind of, we are putting leadership to question here. It's a little more test to leadership. And the way you are looking at it, it seems people are taking emotion to the temple of justice. Quite okay. I sympathize with the parents of the deceased students. And I sympathize with those one alive in the custody of the bandits. Be it as it may, we have to be very, very careful in whatsoever we are going to do. We should look at the pros and the cons of whatsoever decision we are going to take and whatsoever decision we are going to make. Look in whatsoever. Look at the cost and the benefits. Okay. Where the two. Uh, okay, I'll like you, sir. When you look, when you I, look I understand you. Allow me, allow me, allow me to say it, please. Allow okay. me to say it, please. Oh, oh, okay. Calm down, please. Allow me to say it. Allow yeah. me to say it. Calm down briefly, you please. See, when you look at the cost and benefits, it's much more beneficial not to pay the ransom. And now, we now put pressure on the federal government, you know, on the police, the DSS, 
You understand? And all the apparatus of security to be much more efficient in fishing out the bandits that are responsible for this and rescuing the remaining children. That is the best way to go. Okay, Alaji. Thank you very much. Um, <coughs> let me bring this to uh, Mr. Gideo Logo in studio. Um, you, you said, you know, entirely uh, that if you're not going to pay, you know, uh, ransom, then you have to make the abductions impossible or something like that. That you have to be just very much like where Elijah landed there. Um, the security must be such that it can't happen. But if it's still going to be able to happen, uh, go, go from there. If it's you still know, going to be able um, to happen... Which, which seems to be the situation we have on our hands. I'm overwhelmed, and my heart is very, very heavy. Heavy. Mm. You know, because some pictures are going through my mind now. <clears throat> By the grace of God, I've been to the Aso Villa. I've been to some, you know, state houses in Nigeria. And I know the level of security available. And I keep wondering if other citizens mean anything. It's sad. My, my concern, you see, when you embark on policy, it is towards a purpose. And Alaji uh, Hassan just mentioned something now that is brilliant. You are to secure. How you secure is your intelligence uh, procedure. But please secure. In fact, we should not even be discussing negotiating or not negotiating. Those things should be under the table, behind the doors. The news should be that 20 students have been kidnapped. We have rescued them. Then the terrorists have fled into foreign nations. You see, they have, we have, you know what I'm saying, sir. But right now, we are even intimidating the people, reporting the kind of ammunition available to them and things like that. So I, I don't want to subscribe to the fact that, you know, a terrorists are now reigning in my country. It's sad. Before the president went to the UK for medical checkup, he said, do everything to wipe them out, go after the, the, the sponsors. And that's why we are saying now that after much is said and done, more is said than done. We need, we need security in Nigeria, sir. This thing started but in the northeastern part of the country. That, it's almost enveloping the so, whole so, nation. Sorry, sir. I, I, that's a self-evident truth. We, we need security in this country. Uh, I'm just a bit concerned when you began to equate the security at um, State House, you know, and some other places you visited. Um, I, I just get a bit concerned then because um, I'm trying to wonder what you're trying to deduce because everywhere, even in America that we've quoted this morning, yes. everybody knows the, the security at the White House. I know. Not every, no, um, not every um, American, not every American you know, has the benefit of that kind of security. I, I appreciate that, sir. So I appreciate see, that. But by extension... Of introducing emotion into no, the conversation. It's not by extension, sir, mm -hmm. the concern also should be expressed to the people. Mm -hmm. And I think I have asked some salient questions this morning. And if you permit me, and you can go and search, when some of these things happen to prominent people, within okay. 48 hours, within 24 hours, they are resolved, sir. Well, we, we, we and that's my call. And until we give a wide spectrum to security, mm. it may not be taken with the level of seriousness okay, that, that we expect. Okay. Like some Nigerians are asking, how many of our leaders have their children in Nigerian schools? So these are questions that are bothering us. Well, and and they are also what, what bordering on in? our subject of focus. They are exactly. also bordering exactly. their related. So on how our interested are you? We are talking about uh, the medical facilities we have in the country. Uh, uh, when you can jet out to Germany and get yourself treated and everything, why should you be concerned about okay. whether doctors are going on strike or not? Let when your children are in school abroad, why should you be concerned about us going on strike or not? These are the issues bordering us. Sir. Well, let me go over to Alaji Abdulaziz. And uh, quite frankly, he was comprehensive. He took, you know, all the time that he needed. Uh, he was comprehensive in his submission. Alaji Hassan. Uh, 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 thank you, sir, uh, because um, it can't be clearer than you have made it. What you have said is that, um, it, quite frankly, it dovetails into what my guest in studio is saying. The right way to go is not to pay ransom. There will be costs, but, you know, it is what it is. That's uh, because um, otherwise there will be no end to the blackmail. Did I paraphrase that rightly, sir? Um, 
um, whether we like it or not, it seems people are not aware of the situation of people of Kaduna State and more and other northwestern states. If you wear the shoes, you will know where it pinches. People in that island who are impoverished by the menace of the bandits. People will gather their kobo kobo and give to bandits. Some sold their houses, some sold their farmlands and gave the money to bail out their relations with the bandits. Now, the bandits have succeeded in exhausting the holdings of the people. The main target now is the state and the federal government where they can have a chunk. And if you continue to pay, you will pay forever. Yeah. That is my logic here. Yeah. Look, let me tell you, uh, 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 we have a recent problem with us. Of Chad. The death of Idris Deby of Chad is a serious problem. Yeah. And we can only talk about democracy in a peaceful atmosphere. You cannot have democracy in chaos. You cannot have, you cannot even put it here in level. If cultists are running riots, or any of us are running riots, I don't think anybody will go out and vote. Talk less of bandits with AK-47, GPMG, PMG, and Ninja. All right, Alaji, uh, well, thank you very much. I take the point that you are making, and indeed, in particular, the point you also made about the, um, the demise of um, Idris Deby and um, the impact that that is going to have on uh, security in our, our region. Thank you very much, Alaji uh, Abdul Aziz, Sunny communications expert and opinion uh, molder. So um, we, we, we'll open the phone lines now because I, I suspect that um, our viewers might have been itching to call in. Uh, that can be done presently. It's, it's, it, it, it's a catch-22 situation. You don't really know. Uh, w one can understand the position of the law. But then, as I said, this, w I think when it suits through the law, it also observes that law was made for man and not the other way around. So um, uh, maybe this is one of the things that parents, are, or, you know, guardians and people who have loved ones uh, with kidnappers, are sort of trying to explore but one understands the truism that in a blackmailing situation if that is what this is you, you, there will be no end to it once you pay once you pay first there will be no end to it and the rhetorical question has been asked those that did pay up where are they now yes i i, I quite agree with that but going beyond that let's look at the impact on uh, national cohesion for example this terrorism has impacted the NYSC project that was intended to make Nigerians go around, intermarry, interrelate. Now, you profile the states to post graduates based on the security profile of that state. I mean, does that, does that help anyone? Right now, let's ask a simple question. Even if your child is given admission in a school in Kaduna, will you allow that child to go? But so is the war against Western no, no. education? But he, he, he should go uh, because it's a risk and it's a national. You see, everybody has to. When you said, when you quoted earlier that um, you know security is everyone's business. Yes. Uh, the very thing that you were suggesting with the question that you won't allow your kid to go to certain places, where by the way there are still citizens of other parts of Nigeria in those places, you're playing into the game plan and agenda. Of that, the is, that, is, that is the vision of terrorism. Terrorism is to intimidate the people. I asked a question. By content analysis, how many schools have been shut down okay, in that me, region? Let me quickly take it from Kesandu. Good morning, Mr. Kesandu. Um, Okay. Very, very okay, quickly, please. Agree, sir. Good morning, sir. Very yes, briefly. I, I agree. Uh, yes, I agree to you, uh, Barista. The question is, while I agree the sentiments of our parents, because no parents will have this child in the arms of terrorists and be happy. And I also share in the school of thought that you don't negotiate with terrorists. But the question is, why we don't negotiate with terrorists? What are we putting on ground? You see, some of these people are the ones at the hem of our head, as regards the APC, the party in 
power. Why don't you stand up and tell Mr. President, even with these governors, why are these bandits in Katrina? Are, 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 are they disappearing into thin air? These people are somewhere. I we say we cannot have our men go and combat them wherever they are? Okay. They are doing as if these people, they will kidnap these students and go into thin air. Yeah. Somebody has to go to somewhere these people are and fish them out. Somebody is not telling Nigerians the truth about this whole thing. And we have our students, our brothers and sisters being adopted. Someone has to tell us the truth because these people, they do not disappear. They are somewhere in Kaduna and this thing is happening. Someone Thank you. has to Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kesandu. This country. Thank you very much, Kesandu. You know, um, you know, please, when you do get in, try and keep it brief, just in case there are quite a number of people who want to chip in on this particular uh, quandary almost. Uh, what do we do? Uh, to pay or not to pay? Well, Kaduna State Government is clear on the matter not to pay. I pay. haven't said that. How yeah. do we prevent? Uh -huh. that, that is the concern. Uh -huh. Because as oh, Are we now girls, saying that this, whether we are paid or not, to be killing, kidnappings, if Look, you are being blackmailed, the, the, the there has to be it, a solution. It's a, new, it's a new industry that has, that has evolved now. They are not hiding it. They need money for all the activities, and it's coming from. It's going but, to come from ransom. Can, can we trace? It's going to come can from we trace ransom. The background, sir. Around four years ago, we used to read, and they are there. Oh, four containers of tramadol imported into Nigeria, and some of us were asking, where do these drugs end when the custom seizes them? Ammunition imported to Nigeria, where are they? Okay. Military camouflage imported to Nigeria, where are they? Now we are seeing where they are. And the big question, the next big question, who are their sponsors? Okay. For what purpose? These are intelligence issue for the security apparatus. Let me say, Mr. Adeshino, calling in from Ikeja. Good morning, sir. Morning, Uncle Yori. How are you today? Very well, thank you. Good morning to your guests, too. Please, um, we have to be honest with ourselves in this country. Let government tell us, are they afraid to fight these kidnappers? We have all of the power. That's a mission. To take out everybody who is disturbing the peace of this country. Why are we afraid to fight them? The president threatened a few days ago that they should not, you know, force him to act. They should force him to act. That's why we even said it. Okay. We cannot keep reading every day people being killed, you know, roads being blocked, communities being ravaged. It is heart wrenching. No Nigerian is happy. The truth must be told. No, very good. I, 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 sorry, sorry, Mr. Adishina. I got to interrupt you there, but thank you very much for calling in. Mr. Adishina, Mr. Adishina has then touched on yet another perception that's out there, which is that um, government is able to confront this situation if it wished to do so. Now, a lot of people are not going to understand that because um, government is telling us day in, day out that they want to get on top of the terrorism thing. They want to take the problem out. But continuously, people say that there's an agenda. You, you can talk to your blue in the face. Now, I don't know if that's possible with a black man, but you know what I mean. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but, but they're saying that if government wanted to, they could confront these people, but in doing so, there will be costs that government probably doesn't want to incur. A perception. I don't know what the evidence is, but that perception is out there. You, you know, it was Mr. Adishina who brought it back up by saying that, <laughs> who, who, are we afraid? Are we afraid to take them capacity, on? Nigeria has 300% capacity to engage the issue. 300%? Three, uh, 300 I trust the capacity well of my people. Uh, but before you proceed, uh, you know, we've been speaking in studio for quite a while. Uh, Mazi Okorafo at home. Good morning, sir. In Aruchuku. Good morning, Sayori. Good morning, Dr. Jide. Mm, good morning. Dr. Jide, you see, Nigerian government is still waiting for a miracle to happen very soon. See, that is not in that issue that the green field. You see, LFI should find a lasting solution in that state because, one, the leadership role we are talking about is the chief security officer of the state. It's not a question of diverting the responsibility of the state as a leader to another state or to the federal government. I'm saying this because we have come to a situation whereby let him take this pattern. One, call the governing council of the university. When you call the governing council of the university, you sit down and talk with them and find a lot of the governing council. It's not a question of coming to gather the parents of the students that were already there. The, the government council can find a solution to that very issue. Now, may the source of those students that are not in that place 
Thank you, Professor. But the question is, the way we are moving right now in Nigeria is not healthy because every day when you turn your television or to watch television, yeah. you see series of problem, problem of kidnapping, killing. Now, I really have to touch it. I want to find out. Is it a culture or a norm in Nigeria that every day what we see now is killing, killing? Does it mean that the barbaric or cannibalism is not the nature of it? Oyibama would tell you Nigeria is the capital of poverty. Now, so that when I say that Nigeria is the capital of a human being killing, that as if it is ordinary chicken, which is not hurting. Because the scenario that is going on, the foundation going on now, the young women, what they are putting, let me give you an instance like what happened during the Biafra time. When Biafra time, like I was saying to people that they said about the bombing yesterday, what happened about the bombing? When the Nigerian army came to bomb uh, 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 Abba, Abba Maki, Kuh, Abba Maki, what happened? They cannot miss the target and landed in a, a building. Or, behold, the bomb exploded before landing on the building. That's by the way. But the question is this. The technology aspect of security. Nigerian government don't fight the robot to fight their day. Because when they fight was in Abuja as a, as a minister, he knows very well that it's what they call CCTV, which himself was part and parcel of the business. What does he take care of to implement such system in their in their uh, He has the knowledge of what that system is. Look. Okay. I, 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 going, Mazi, I'm, go, I'm going to have to interrupt you. I beg your pardon, but thank you very much for your valuable contribution. Um, and we, we actually have run out of time in studio too. Uh, but something has to be done about the situation. It goes back to intelligence and it goes back to the, the point I was making about this, you know, so-called perception uh, out there that government actually has the wherewithal to be able to take out Boko Haram if they wanted to. Now, I can't, I, I don't know. I would think so. I'd like to think so as a proud Nigerian, uh, proud of our boys in uniform, proud of their capability. I'd like to think so that, you know, no ragtag kind of a people can challenge the Nigerian army. But the perception is that what is the agenda? What is the orders they are getting? I, I mean, think, it's I, confusing. I think I believe so. Joe Biden today will not shut the gates of the White House if the Nigerian government approaches the U.S. to help us. After all, we, we have the brilliant example I made reference to. But the big question is that, is the political will there? Okay. Mr. Yakub, good morning, sir. I think you're going to good be morning, our last caller. Okay. And then, uh, good, good morning to your guys. Yes. Uh, uh, Mr. Jiri, Jiri Ologu. Mr. Jiri Ologu, good morning, sir. Good morning. Jiri, we are at crossroads. You see, Jiri, let me start by, by saying this. When your guest says that uh, yeah, lack of uh, political will, yes, it's part of it. The example that I can give you if you are in this country, when someone has, has, has he calls himself uh, 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 Islamic scholars, he went to this bandit, took a picture with them, and then he came out to tell Nigerian citizens that they take harm, all because what the state is not doing for them, because of the economic aspect of this. See, if you are the following day, I watched this man. I'm sorry to say this. I watched this man on Chinese television. And then they were asking, what do you think these people really need? He began to mention a lot of you're, things. You're, you're talking about saying, Sheikh Gumi? I'm talking about Sheikh Gumi because we lack political will. I didn't think that the Nigerian government that me, I supported, we are campaigning for. And then they are not, they are not treating this, this thing with a lafity. The show who give me of this one clubbing, pick up and then they be clubbing, drink him. So that, because, okay, the question is this. How do you know where these bandits are? How do you know what they really want? And then you are not still telling a press man that after this particular day that they are not killing. Okay, now, she's just saying they are not killing. What she will give me to tell Nigerian citizens now? So, she will be uh, really, Nigerian government, if everybody says that he is not going to negotiate, I supported him not to negotiate. But the question now is this do we really have the harm? to overcome these people. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. I've got to interrupt you. Um, it pained me to do so, but we've just about run out of time for the program. And um, again, Yakub also is frustrated by the conundrum. I entirely endorse, and most law-abiding citizens will, will, will be appalled at the idea of a criminal extorting money and benefiting from a crime. Uh, the court found that, uh, that. I know that from reading, you know, uh, you know literature. Um, but we, we, we have a problem on our hands here. We, we have a challenge. And um, I, you weren't able to get into the whole uh, perception of people 
that the authorities and the army are entirely able to take out Boko Haram. I hope it is not being simplistic, but so we are told. Clearly, it, 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 if it's the president... It's embarrassing now how soldiers are being killed, how policemen are being killed in their numbers. But I want to ask a simple question, and that may help us, touching on political will. Yeah, how political will. How did the federal so, government dismantle the Lekki and SARS protest? So all of this comes down... I think down that will help us. To, so we can leave... Where this. there is a will, there is a way. And I Why are the bandits not in Rwanda? Why are they not in Ghana? Why are they not in Benin Republic? And I think I will anchor my questions on those. And let those who love this nation go and dwell over this. It's a convenient place for me to also hang it. So thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Jide Olugun. God bless uh, Nigeria. God bless Nigeria, indeed, uh, lawyer and public affairs analyst. And uh, thanks also to Al Haji Hassan Abdulaziz Sunny, uh, who was with us earlier on the phone. We had wanted to show you his face, but you know it doesn't work sometimes. Uh, but the most important thing was to get the content of Al Haji's um, contribution, which we did uh, in full measure. So, once again, thank you very much, Hassan Abdulaziz Sunny and uh, Jide Ologun here, and to you guys uh, that called in as well. Uh, Ada, for some reason, wasn't able to get in today, but uh, <laughs> part of our regulars. Uh, and we've not heard from Mr. George for quite a while. I don't know what's going on, but I, I prattle on. Um, join us tomorrow for a fresh edition. I am Yori Folani. Bye-bye for now.